we're going to start our recording now and so that people all over the world can be a part of this lesson today. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Leroy Carter, Back to Basics Ministries. We call this church the Worship Where I Am Church. And before we even get into the worship and, and the praise and the word, I just want to say the Lord has put on my heart, and I want to share this with you, and I need your feedback and your input. God said, start a virtual Sunday school. Ladies and gentlemen, visualize this, an online Sunday school where we can meet for one hour and discuss questions, issues, problems, where we can uh, receive your questions. You might have questions about Christianity, being a Christian, what the Bible says, uh, questions about the church, and, and questions about uh, this uh, denominational practice or this and that and why this goes on. And what, we, what God has put on my heart to do is to teach people what the real church is. But mainly, God said there are so many people out there who have questions. They want to know and are not being taught. And questions about being a Christian, being a Christian life. Should, should a Christian drink? Uh, should, should a Christian smoke? Uh, uh, can I go to heaven without going to church? Uh, uh, if I backslide, is there any hope for me? There, and, and there are Christians who don't go to church and feel condemned because they don't go to church. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to give you an opportunity to ask your questions. You don't have to identify yourself. You can ask your questions through the chat line. You can send me an email. You can call me, but I want to address your questions online. And we're thinking about calling this the virtual Sunday school. Imagine one hour where we can ask questions and get answers from the scriptures, not from my head or my heart or your head and your heart or what you think or what I think. We will look at what <clears throat> the scripture says about your questions so we can hear God's voice concerning your issue. I believe many people worldwide will be blessed. We want to have it as a live program. And I'm really thinking about <clears throat> Sunday morning from 10 to 11. Sunday mornings, one hour before the worship service, just like a Sunday school. But I mean, it'll be different from Sunday school. No, no, no textbooks, no person reading this passage and, and give me your take on this passage. No, but to bring you to school and answer your questions, because a lot of you are going through life. You don't have the answers you want to know. You want to know, am I doing this right? Uh, 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 some of you need encouragement. And so why can't we come together? The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, for lack of knowledge of me. That's what God says. So God has given us this wonderful opportunity online. We're going to have live chat, live Q&A for one hour before we go into our Sunday morning worship and, and praise service with the word at 11 o'clock. So I really ask, want to ask you, think about this, pray about this. And give me some input. Send me your answers. Send me your thoughts to uh, LeroyCarter69.com or call me 404-205-1101. Don't call me right now because I can't pick up my phone. And Or send me a message on Twitter at BTBMIN uh, or hit me up on Facebook. And, and, and then we can talk about what things you would like to see. What are some of the uh, subjects you'd like to be taught in the uh, um, Sunday school, the virtual Sunday school? What are some of the questions you have? Some of you have been sitting on questions for a long time, scared to ask your questions. or and, and, and many of you may not have a pastor to answer your questions. Not that I know everything, but I read this book. I've got this book. It's a bestseller. It's called The Bible. It's got all the answers in it. And that's what I teach from. That's what I stand upon. And so we praise God for you and thank God for you. So 
pray about the the virtual Sunday school. The virtual Sunday school. And we'd like to start this soon. I really would like to start the virtual Sunday school soon. I know we have our trip to Africa coming up July 12 through uh, 19, but we could start the virtual Sunday school in August or September and just get people in tune where, where you can come online with us in a live presentation and we can discuss the issues that trouble you, the questions you have, and get God's answers on them. I think that'd be a blessing to a lot of people. I want to give a shout out to my granddaughter, Kena. Hey, Kena, Ken, you go, girl. You go, girl. Praise God. And, and give a shout out to all of you. Amen. All over the world. Elijah, we're coming to Africa. We're coming to Kenya in, in July. We look forward to being with you. We thank God for what you guys are doing in Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited about this worldwide ministry. Praise God. I got a call yesterday from Canada and, and where uh, Bishop Davis was visiting in Canada and he watched the tape of Jackie's teaching, her Wednesday night teaching on Ephesians and gave her some kudos. It blessed her, put a smile on Jackie's face. And so this ministry is reaching the world, ladies and gentlemen. And, and we have the purpose of presenting God to you. And most of all, we want you, we want you to be saved. There are some of you, you're looking, you're here every Sunday and you're still not sure whether you're saved, but we want to show you in the scripture how to get saved, how to stay saved. And ladies and gentlemen, because Jesus is coming back again soon. So pray about, pray about the worship where I am church, pray about the virtual Sunday school and, and pray about your family. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to get our family members saved. We've got to get uh, override all the drama going on in our families <clears throat> and among our friends and in this nation. And we've got to press to get people saved. So we want to open the virtual Sunday school soon and complement it with the uh, Worship Where I Am Church and our Wednesday night Bible studies. We're doing all we can do to promote Jesus Christ. So that's a commercial for the virtual Sunday school. I'm looking forward to your, your responses soon. Pray about it. Give me your ideas, your suggestions, and then we're going to build a list of questions that we can address and that, that, that we can address and that we can put online uh, so that people all over the world can hear. Because the questions you ask are questions inside of a lot of people who are afraid to ask their questions. But let's get God's answers on these situations. Praise God. I'm so excited. My granddaughter's online with us and her daddy. Uh, I mean, that just, we're passing the torch to another new generation. And so glad that you and your family are on board. And we just thank God. Well, bless God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it is such a joy to be in your presence once again. Thank you, Father, for waking us up to a brand new day, the day that we call Father's Day, and we salute all the fathers. We thank you for blessing people to be fathers. Most of all, we want to shout out, to give you a shout out, Father God. You are our Heavenly Father, and Lord Jesus, we thank you for making it possible that God can be our Father because you laid down your life that we might have eternal life. So, Father, we just commit ourselves to you this day. Guide us and bless us. Bless this church, this fellowship, this virtual church. We meet online, Father, but our hearts are knit together like David's and Jonathan's by the Holy Spirit. And I'm asking that you bless every listener, every viewer, every participant. No matter what their needs are, we ask that you supply their needs. Because you said in Philippians, for my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So we thank you, Father, and we bless you, and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We want to encourage you in the work you're doing for Jesus Christ. 
we want to encourage you. You're doing a great work. Oh, uh, uh, I don't get to see you that often, but I, I, I sense in my spirit you're doing a great work. And I, I, I minister to you and I fellowship with you. And we talk and chat. And, and I want to encourage you all, stay on the wall. Stay on the Ladies and gentlemen, these are evil days. Folks getting blown up all over the world, terror and all this, shootouts and, and, and all this. But ladies and gentlemen, live in perfect peace. The Bible says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on the Lord. I praise God. I praise God. I praise God. Keep your mind on Jesus. Don't focus on the terror or the evil. You see, Satan wants you. Satan wants you to concentrate on evil. Satan wants you to uh, keep an obituary count. Who died today? Uh, they sure are leaving here. Man, folks are leaving here quickly with the quickness. Well, ladies and, ge ladies and gentlemen, man was born to die. He was born to die. But in between the dots, the dash, what, what are you going to do with the dash between your birth and your death? That dash ought to have written over the top of it, he gave himself to Jesus. She gave her life to Jesus. That's what the dash is all about. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are made fearfully and wonderfully that you might praise God. So let your dash be to the praise and glory and honor of God. Don't get caught up on in the bad news because there's bad news all around. But let's talk about the good news. The good news, the gospel, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross that you and I might have life. Let's talk about life. Ladies and gentlemen, we have life in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And that leads us into our subject, the tabernacle and you. Ladies and gentlemen, that word tabernacle is so important. And we get it from Exodus uh, uh, chapter 25. We, we see the tabernacle, the tabernacle and you. And we're, we're finishing up today an eight-week series on the tabernacle and you. I want to thank you for sticking with me during this series of messages. I believe that every message has blessed you. And if you have missed these messages, go on our website, www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. That's www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com, where these messages are archived. And these our messages go back two years. Our Bible study lessons go back two years. So you can go on the website and pull up any lesson, any teaching, any message as far back as two years. And now you can also get our lessons archived at YouTube, www.youtube.com. We're going to be doing more with YouTube, uh, more live presentations on YouTube where people can come on and they can, we can chat and we can talk and, and minister as we, as we go along. So this word tabernacle, ladies and gentlemen, today our lesson is the tabernacle and you Part eight, the tabernacle and you, part eight, and, and our subject is let's put it all together. Let's put it all together. Ladies and gentlemen, I had mentioned about five minutes ago that the Holy Spirit lives in you. If Hey, if you've been born again by the Spirit of God, then the Holy Ghost lives inside of you. Get it. Get it, get it, get it. You need to get that in your spirit. Because you have given your life to Jesus and you have asked him to come into your life and be your Savior and Lord, he now lives inside of you. That's why we're teaching these eight weeks on the tabernacle. Our objective is, number one, to show you the Old Testament tabernacle and what God says about it. Number two, to show you how the tabernacle relates to the modern day church. And number three, this is the kicker, to show you how the tabernacle relates to you. So you might want to go back and start the series over again 
and listen uh, to the tape again. And let's go back to day one, eight weeks ago, get that first lesson and look at the whole tabernacle and follow those these eight lessons, including today's lesson, so that we can see why God designed the tabernacle, what were the pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. We can identify all six. Today we're going to look at all six pieces of furniture in the tabernacle and what we do when we come to each one and how God blesses us. And then we're going to look at why the modern day church is set up the way it is. Whether you're worshiping under a grove of trees, you have a pulpit somewhere, you have seats somewhere, you might have uh, some candles somewhere, uh, 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 you might have some incense somewhere, but why are these things placed in the church the way they are? Because they are a replica of the Old Testament tabernacle. And then you said, well, Pastor Carter, what's the tabernacle have to do with my body? Ladies and gentlemen, your body, your body, that 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 handsome body, that virile body. Uh, 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 my daughter said the other day online, she said, my, I've never seen my dad fat. He doesn't have an ounce of fat. Well, I got about five pounds I could use, lose, but God has blessed me to keep myself in good physical physical condition for 74 years old. You ain't going to find any fat on me because I try to, I will exercise it off or walk it off or try to guard what I'm eating. But God has blessed me because this tabernacle, ladies and gentlemen, this body, you only get one body on this earth. Did you get that? You only get one body on this earth. And if this body goes south or something goes wrong with it, or, or, or you have an irreversible situation, you're in difficult trouble, and a lot of people are. But ladies and gentlemen, whether your body is pure, whether your body is strong, or whether your body is weak, God lives inside of everyone who has received Jesus Christ as Lord. That is why we've got to call our children back to Jesus. We've got to call our grandchildren back to Jesus. In my case, my great-grandchildren. We've got to tell everybody's children, whether they're our blood kin or not, we've got to tell them, give your life to Jesus. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I tremble in my spirit. I tremble in my sanctified spirit when I think about the millions of people who would be destroyed today, right now, if Jesus came back. Ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus came back right now, a lot of people would be destroyed. There would be bishops who would go to hell. There are preachers who would go to hell. There are famous people who would go to hell. There are people in our families who would go to hell, even in our household who would go to hell. That is why we got to teach them about Jesus. We've got to teach this gospel. When they get angry with you, keep on teaching it preach the word, and we've got to pray, 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 and we've got to love them. Even when they don't want to love us, when they hate on us, we've got to love on, the, on them. Because if Jesus comes back today, if he cracks the sky, if the angel blows the trumpet and Jesus stands in the clouds, we're talking about billions. We're talking about billions of people in this world who would perish and go to hell. We're talking about co-workers. We're talking about close friends. We're talking about homies. We're talking about roadies. We're talking about people who drink out of the same cup. Many will perish and go to hell. So we've got to preach the gospel and let them know that God has a plan, that God put you on this earth for one purpose, and that is to tabernacle with you. That's a word you need to add to your vocabulary. God wants to tabernacle with you. Well, tabernacle means he wants to dwell with you. He wants to live in you. So turn to your Bible in uh, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 and 9. Verses 8 and 9. We're emphasizing the word tabernacle. Our subject is the tabernacle and you, part 8. And we're calling this subject putting it all together. We're going to go back to verse uh, day one, and we're going to quickly, uh, in a panoramic view, walk through the tabernacle, uh, show what it means uh, to all of us, and what we're to do at each station of the tabernacle. And our objective, ladies and gentlemen, our mission 
is to get into the Holy of Holies. Our mission is to daily enter into the Holy of Holies to be where the Ark of the Covenant is because God made us to fellowship with him. To, he, he made us to tabernacle with him. And his purpose is that he wants us to live and abide in his presence. Now, he's given us the pattern. He's given us the word. He's given us Jesus. He's given us the Holy Spirit. And so, so, so the only thing left for you to do is to apply what God has given you and enter into his presence and stay into his presence. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at Exodus chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. The word of God says, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. This is God speaking to Moses saying, let them make me a sanctuary, meaning a tabernacle. Why? <laughs> you see a semicolon and the words following the semicolon that I may dwell among them. God's plan, God revealed it to Moses and, and he gives us revelation knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. God says, let them make me a tabernacle so that I may dwell among them. Verse 9, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. So God is speaking to Moses, ladies and gentlemen. And as he's speaking to Moses, he's speaking to us. He said, let them make me a tabernacle a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. And then he says in verse nine, let them make it according to the pattern that I've given to you uh, and include all the furnishings thereof that I have given unto you. Uh, even so make it. So Moses was under command to build the tabernacle. I remember uh, when God had us to build our first church in Chester, Pennsylvania, God gave us a plain, simple building. He said, I want the pulpit here. I want this here. I want there. He, I want this here. He gave us a pattern. And, and I talked to an architect, and ar an architect drew up the blueprints. And then we got a builder, Frank Esposito. And Frank and his family, uh, they were construction people. They built that church. And, and, and it is still an amazing tabernacle built on the pattern that God has given us, built on the pattern that God gave to Moses. And ladies and gentlemen, when you realize, after looking at these eight uh, segments of the tabernacle in you, when you realize that your body is the tabernacle of God, you're going to act like a brand new person. You're going to talk differently. You're going to look differently. You're going to feel better about yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, when you realize that this body that you live in, you may limp, you may be stooped over, you may be uh, have old wrinkles, and you, you may have lost your teeth and all, but when you receive Jesus, he lives inside of you by choice. Ladies and gentlemen, look, check this out. It's by choice. He chooses to live inside of everyone who accepts him as a believer. That is why you and I have to be careful how we talk to one another, how we look at one another. You know, that look you give people you don't like, or the hand, you, you give talk to the hand, or, or the way you walk away from them, or turn your back on, or just ignore them. Ladies and gentlemen, You've got to be careful, and I've got to be careful how we talk to one another because if that person is a believer, that means God lives in that person. You've got to be careful how you look at people whose skin color is different or whose uh, texture is different or whose language is different. If that person has Jesus on the inside, then you're dishonoring God. You're grieving the Holy Spirit just by the way you look at somebody or just by the way you say something about somebody or just by the way you diss them or kick them to the curb. So we've got responsibilities, ladies and gentlemen. When God allowed us to be born and gave us a body, God gave us responsibility. That little baby in the crib has no clue that he or she has responsibility. 
mom and dad really have no clue about responsibilities. That's why a lot of mothers and fathers goof up. They mess up. They they uh, make these babies and they dress them all up like princesses and princes and 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 and. and but don't train them in the fear of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, your children are not your children. They are a gift from God. God has loaned you your children for a season. And at some point, you've got to let them go. You've got to let them go to be what God has purposed them to be. That's why we cannot live vicariously through our children. In other words, I see middle-aged women dressing like their daughters, talking like their daughters, getting their hair done like their daughters, and trying to live their lives through their daughters' lives. I see men, you know, old old dude, old school dude, pimping, man, got a little dip in their step, and trying to live through their sons or grandsons. No, no, you've got to let those children and grandchildren go, and you've got to let them discover God, and you've got a responsibility to teach them about God and lead them about God. Your job is not to train them to be a super baseball star or a super football star. Most men want their sons to be football stars. No, you've got to take them to church. I remember my, my son, Wes, he used to get teased so much. They called him Charlie Church Boy. He used to hate that. Man, they called him Charlie Church Boy. And everybody, because he is the preacher's kid, they expected him to be some little wimpy kid and all this. But Wes, Wes had his way. Wes, Wes was macho. He showed him. And Wes could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. But he didn't like that Charlie Church boy thing. But I kept on taking him to church. I kept on taking him to church. I kept on instilling upon him that God's got a purpose. God's got a purpose for you. He's named after King David. Wesley David Carter, we named him after King David. I named him after a baseball star, Wes Covington, and King David. That's why his name is Wesley David Carter. And he's got a plan because God has a plan for his life. And now he's got to train his children and train his grandchildren. And we've got to pass the torch, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can bring people to the place where they receive Jesus Christ We've got to be patient with them and help them to nurture Christ, let Christ grow in them, because, because look at this. This is going to take you over the top. God, who lives in heaven, reigns in heaven, spoke the universe into existence. This almighty God who sent his only begotten son, Jesus, into the world to die on the cross, and God raised his son from the dead. God who made everything and is the creator creator of everything now desires to live inside of you. And God wants to live inside of you with all of his heavenly power, with all the power that he used to create the universe, with all the power that he used to bring Jesus back from the dead, with the, whole, the power of the Holy Ghost. God wants to live in you. He wants to tabernacle in you. So God told Moses, build me a sanctuary. Build me a tabernacle so that I can dwell among the people. And for 40 years, for 40 years, God dwelt among the people. And they carried the tabernacle throughout the wilderness for 40 years until God took them into the promised land. Once they got into the promised land, years later, the tabernacle was set up and, and years later, they built a permanent building. No longer did the Jews have to carry the tabernacle. God had a permanent building where he promised Solomon. He promised Solomon, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. God promised he would dwell inside of that temple, that tabernacle. And then, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus died on the cross, this whole tabernacle situation was rendered null and void. When Jesus, the moment Jesus died on the cross, the tabernacle and the temple, even though the temple still stood after Jesus died, 
the whole manner of worship and approach God, approaching God changed. Jesus died on the cross, and even after that, the priests still went into the temple, did their daily routines, but there was no, no, no reaching God through that system. The tabernacle temple situation ended when Jesus died on the cross. From the moment Jesus died on the cross, God gave the Holy Spirit a new residence. A new residence, ladies and gentlemen. God himself found a new residence on earth. Not in a building, not in the uh, great cathedrals that men have built, but God decided to live inside of people who accept his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior. That is why you must be born again. If you're seeking God, you want God, you must be born again. And how do you get born again? By asking Jesus Christ to come into your life and receiving him by faith, repenting of your sins, and committing yourself to walk with Jesus for the rest of your life. And then the Holy Spirit enters into you and begins living in you. He talks to you. He will speak to you. God wants to speak to you every day and live with you. So God is tabernacling with us, ladies and gentlemen, every day because we have accepted the gift of his son, Jesus. So I want to take you through a walk through the tabernacle. And as we walk through the tabernacle, and we're going to do this rather quickly, we're going to walk through our own body. And I'm going to show you, with the help of the Holy Spirit, how your body is now the temple of God and how God lives inside of your tabernacle. It doesn't matter what you look like. You might have cancer. You might have broken limbs. You might have missing limbs. You might have, uh, 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 you may be blind. You may, may be, have no kidneys. But God lives inside of your spirit. If you have accepted Jesus as Lord, God is living inside of you, and he's creating in you a new creature. This earthly tabernacle is going to be destroyed, ladies and gentlemen. This body this 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 body, uh, this handsome fellow you see here sitting in front of this TV camera, these, these looks won't mean a thing. Our bodies are going to be destroyed. That big old 46 inch chest you have, Wesley, uh, 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 Bishop Elijah, those handsome la handsome face you got, all that's going to be destroyed. But it's what's inside of you that will live forever. And if you've got Jesus inside of you, you will dwell with God forever. But if you don't have Jesus, you can be the best looking person in the world. You can have your own, own uh, reality show. You can be a TV star, a movie star. But if you don't have Jesus, you're going to go straight to hell and you will burn forever and ever. That is why we present the gospel and the opportunity for you to get saved. You can get saved today and get God on the inside. So let's take a look at the tabernacle. First of all, if you're looking at the schematic, at the schematic, you see it's a tent. It's a tent. Uh, the whole tabernacle was a uh, hundred cubits long, lengthwise, a hundred cubits or 150 feet long. So that was 50 yards. The length of the tabernacle, ladies and gentlemen, was 50 yards, and the width of it was 10 cubits or 15 square feet. Okay, 15 square, 15 feet. 50 cubits wide, 100 cubits long, 150 feet long, 15 feet wide. Not a large building. And whenever they traveled, they took it down and the priest carried it. And then when they stopped, uh, they rebuilt it and put all the furniture in place. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the features of the tabernacle. Listen carefully. Imagine this tabernacle is your church, First Baptist, Second Pentecostal, uh, uh, Holy, Holy Ghost headquarters, whatever you charge, you, whatever you name your church. First of all, to get in, you must enter into the door. Ladies and gentlemen, the whole purpose of the tabernacle is to get to the Holy of Holies, not to get to your seat on your favorite pew, not to get in a good seat 
where you can watch your girlfriend sing in the choir, not to get in the in a seat where you can make sure the preacher sees you. No, no. Your purpose for going to church, your purpose for going to the tabernacle is to get into the presence of God, to get God's attention in the Holy of Holies at the Ark of the Covenant. And so God set up a system whereby because men sinned, God said, if they bring a, an animal to the priest and present that animal at the entrance of the tabernacle, the priest would take that animal, slaughter it, take it to the altar, <clears throat> burn that animal on the altar, burn the blood and sprinkle the blood, and God would cover their sins, not remove them. God did not remove any sins during the Old Testament period until Jesus died. Think about this. All the sins from the time of Seth, the son of Adam, who began, who was the first one to call on the name of the Lord, Seth, the son of Adam, who began taking sacrificial animals to the Lord. All those sins from Seth until Jesus, the death of Jesus, all those sins were covered, never removed. God covered them. All the sacrifices during that period could not remove the sins of the people. The only way God removed sins and still removes sins is through the blood of Jesus, who is the sacrificial lamb of God. And so when we go, whether we were in the Old Testament days going to the tabernacle, we were told to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart. Enter his courts with praise. You can't go to God with an attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, I say, you cannot go to God with an attitude. If you got an attitude against anybody, you need to repent. You need to forgive all those who have ever hurt you in any way. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, whether it's going into your church, whether it's the worship where I am church, whether it's the virtual church, before you come online, confess your sins. Lord, I enter into your presence. I come boldly to the throne of grace. And then it was at the altar that the priests sacrificed the animals, the appropriate animals for the sacrifice. The altar, ladies and gentlemen, the first piece of furniture in the tabernacle represents Jesus Christ. And so when you come to church, the first place you stop should be the altar where you acknowledge that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior and my God and thank him for dying on the cross for your sins. Because now your sins are not only covered, but they have been removed by the blood of God. God, God has no record of your sins, ladies and gentlemen. The death of Jesus removed all sin from Seth up to the time of Jesus and everyone who lived after Jesus, who've ever committed sins, our sins are not covered. They're not hidden by a veil. They are removed by the blood of Jesus. That is why when you sin, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And so what are we to do at the altar? We are to acknowledge Jesus as Savior and Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross. And then here's what we're to do. We ought to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Galatians 2.20 says, For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And you've got to sacrifice your life at the altar. Whether you go to church, whether you worship at home, whether you worship with us online, whether you go to the great cathedral, you've got to surrender your life to Jesus and lay down your life. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to do this daily. Lay down your life and pick up the life of Jesus. Then we move to the brazen laver. The laver was the place where the priests, after doing sacrifice, they had to wash their hands and their feet, get the blood off, get the dirt off. Get the, the filth off. And ladies and gentlemen, that labor represents our body. We've got to 
cleanse our body. You can't go to God filthy. You can't go to God with, with the smell of sex on your body. You've got to repent. you got to bathe. you got to clean yourself up. Don't approach God any old filthy way. And, and, and the labor represents Jesus Christ, the, the, the washing of water through the pure word of God. The labor represents Jesus who washes us of all of our sins with the water of the word of God. That's why we need to study this Bible. The Bible washes us clean. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we go into the holy place, which was covered by animal skins. And in the holy place, the first station, the first piece of furniture is the table of showbread. Twelve loaves of bread on that table. And that those 12 loaves of bread represent the body of Christ. Those uh, 12 loaves of bread re represents uh, Jesus, the bread of life. And, and, and that we can only live by having the bread of life in us. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so uh, the table of showbread reminds us of our own will. Okay, your body is represented at the altar. Your body is represented at the labor to be clean. And at the table of showbread, your will. It's the will of man that gets man into trouble. We have to sacrifice our will and say as we approach God, remember, we're trying to get to the Holy of Holies, the inner place. Lord, I submit my will to you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Then we move to the lampstand. Seven candles on the lampstand. And this lamp, uh, uh, the, the fire burn and the light shine 24 hours a day inside the holy place because the priest had to go in twice a day to replenish the supply of oil, make sure the light was shining. This lampstand represents, ladies and gentlemen, represents Jesus Christ in us, the light of the world. He's the light of the world. He's illumining us. He's illuminating us. Ladies and gentlemen, as you read the word of God, you give the Holy Spirit food to burn and glow and, and, and illuminate you. And then the next piece of furniture in the tabernacle, and you'll see it in the church, is the altar of incense. On some churches, they have a censer where the priests uh sprays incense throughout the church. Well, the high priest in the tabernacle days uh, had to burn incense. And before he went into the Holy of Holies once a year, he had to make sure that he filled the Holy of Holies with incense. If he walked into that Holy of Holies without incense being properly burned, he would die. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the altar of incense reminds us that Jesus died on the cross, and his body that died on the cross was offered as a sweet-smelling fragrance or incense unto the Lord. And now Jesus sits on the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for you and me every day. He's offering sweet prayers to God. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's at the altar of incense where we offer our praise and our prayers and our worship to God. That's why in most churches, the choir sits back here. The choir sits almost near the back of the church. And the choir's job is to offer praise. The choir's job not, is not to sit in and text one another and laugh at the congregation or talk about the preacher. The choir's purpose is to offer praise and glory and honor to God to help usher the people into the presence of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this last place, it's called the Holy of Holies. The high priest was only allowed to go there once a year. There was a curtain four inches thick, 60 feet high, that protected the inner, the holy place from the Holy of Holies. Nobody was allowed to go there except the high priest once a year. And if he was unclean, he would die. God would kill him. They had a chain on his feet. If he went in there and, 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 and 
And if the bells on his clothing were not ringing, the people knew he was dead. And someone and other priests would have to go into the holy place, grab the chain, and drag him out of the holy of holies. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't go to God any old way, mean-hearted, having ought against your brother with a nasty attitude, looking down on someone, having cussed somebody out. You can't go to God having just slept with your neighbor's wife. Then you rush to God uh, in prayer as you're on your way to work. No, no, no. You must repent. You must come clean. You must stop at the altar of incense and offer praise and thanksgiving and pray and, and, and allow your prayer and praise to be a sweet fragrance into the presence of God. And then, ladies and gentlemen, before you can enter into the Holy of Holies, and everyone can enter in now, because the moment Jesus died, the veil, the curtain of the temple was rent in two. It was torn from the top down to the bottom. The 60-foot curtain, four inches thick, was torn in half, which means that no longer was the priestly approach to God in effect in Israel or in the world. When the temple, when the veil of the temple was rent into, it meant that God now offers to anyone who will come to him the opportunity to tabernacle with him. And he will tabernacle with them. And he bids us to come. So it's at the altar of incense, ladies and gentlemen, as you approach God. And, we, and I will teach you, uh, starting next week, how to apply this to your prayer life, how to stop at each station. When you pray, and your objective is to get into the presence of God, and as you wait at the altar of incense, you will hear God's voice say, come in. Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, you will hear God's voice say, come into my presence. And it's in the presence of God. And we can go there any time of the day or night, many times a day. God never closes the door. He made us, ladies and gentlemen. God made us to come into his presence. That's your reason for existence. Your purpose is not to be a superstar. Your purpose is not to have a whole lot of money. Your purpose is not to have a great, big, lucrative, profitable business. Your purpose for being made is to enter into God's presence and dwell with him and live for him and fellowship with him. God made you to commune with him. Ladies and gentlemen, so many in the church are not being taught this, and they just don't know. So encourage people to get these tapes and look at this series, uh, The Tabernacle in You, so that we can know that we know that we know that we know that we can fellowship with God. I took a little bit extra time today. On next week, we're going to uh, just uh, walk you through a prayer, walk you through a, 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 a tour of the tabernacle. Uh, we're concluding the tabernacle series today, but now starting next week, we're going to teach you how to apply because for many weeks from now, God has put on my heart, my heart to teach people how to stay in his presence, how to get into his presence, how to enter into his presence. No matter what's going on in your life, if evil comes against you, hard times come against you, loved ones, friends dying by the numbers, you can still abide in the peace and the presence of the Lord. I know you want this. I want it. Praise God. We've take, taken a look today at the tabernacle and you. Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 says, And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Ladies and gentlemen, your body is now the tabernacle. You may be somebody who says, well, I've not given my life to Jesus, and I've lived my life. I'm a drunk. I'm an alcoholic. I'm on drugs. I've messed up my body. Ladies and gentlemen, there is hope for you. You can be born again today. God can recreate you. If you will confess your sins and believe in your heart, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, that if thou will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him 
from the dead, you shall be saved. I don't care if you're a killer, uh, you're a terrorist, uh, you rob banks, you rape women, uh, you have abused little children, uh, 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 you're a homosexual, you're a lesbian, uh, you're a liar, you're a rotten, crooked politician, uh, you're a lying preacher, no matter who you are. You can be born again today. You are not without hope. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And if you want to be saved today, if you're really serious about it, God will save you with a quickness today if you'll confess Jesus as Lord. And then for the rest of your life, commit your life to studying this word of God. Commit your life that you're going to tabernacle with God. Commit your life that you're going to learn how to abide in his presence and live for him. That means you've got to deny yourself of those wicked, evil pleasures that have uh, 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 captivated you all these years. You can be born again by the Spirit of God. God's got the power. He's waiting on you to come to him. You can call on him and get saved. No matter what people think about you, no matter what they call you, no matter what you have done, you can be born again today. And when you're born again, you become the tabernacle of God. The Bible says, know ye not, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, whose you are, the one who dwells in you. Know you not your body. This gives us a, us a whole new perspective on our body. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. God made this body fearfully and wonderfully. He made it intricately. This body cannot be duplicated. They can clone people. They can make robots. But the human body cannot be duplicated. Only God can make a human body. And only God can give you the new birth. So if you're listening in today and you want to be saved, repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I want to be saved. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. I receive Jesus now to be my Savior, my Lord, and my God. And I thank you, Father, for the gift of salvation. Well, praise God, praise God. I pray that you pray that prayer. Email me. Hit me up. Hit me up on, on Twitter, Facebook, so we can chat, uh, so I can send you some literature, pray with you, and encourage you on your journey. Uh, I help you to uh, find a church where you can grow and, and, and study the Word of God. And we just thank God. Thanks for attending the worship where I am church, the virtual church, the online church where people's lives are being changed. And look out, keep your eye out, keep your eye out, ladies and gentlemen, for the virtual Sunday school. We're going to be starting a Sunday school. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be, oh man, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be taste better than a Philly cheesesteak. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. God bless you.